We'll do it live! Hi folks, and welcome to an OA Labs Patreon exclusive tutorial. Today we're gonna to talk about the security in Knit Cookie, or more practically, why is the entry point to your PE file not the same as main? Now, those of you who have done some coding in Visual Studio will probably already understand this concept. But if you're new to this and you're just starting to reverse engineer binaries, you might get tripped up by this problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you through quickly how this code is set up, why it exists, and how to bypass it or ignore it when you're debugging a binary. So what are we talking about? So here in IDA, we have a hello world binary. Here's the source code for the binary. It's written in C and it's compiled with Visual Studio 2019. Now in here, we have three functions, hello, hello2, and main. And main just calls hello1 and hello2 just to give us some code that we can actually look at in IDA. When I compile these, I compile them with the standard settings for Visual Studio. The only thing I've changed is I've disabled compiler optimization. I won't get into this too deep, but what this means is that the code that we see in IDA should closely resemble the code that we've written here. If I left on compiler optimizations, the compiler might have made some changes to the code to make it faster at runtime or other optimizations, which would have made the assembly that we look at in IDA look quite different from the code that we have here. Now, if we go back to IDA here, we can see that in our main function, the code looks very similar to what we've written in Visual Studio. Here's our main, here's our two calls to the hello world functions. If we click on this, this one prints out hello world one, go back, this one prints out hello world two, right? So this code is very similar to what we have written in Visual Studio. However, if we go to exports and we go to the start, so this is the entry point of the PE file, we can see there's some extra code here. And those of you who have been analyzing a lot of malware or a lot of binaries might have noticed that this code pops up quite a bit. So what is it and why is it placed before our main in our program? Well, this is part of what's considered the Visual C runtime. And this is a special set of boilerplate code that Visual Studio will add to your binary when you compile it. Now, I don't want to get too in-depth into the compiler specifics or how to change this or modify it as a developer, because of course, we want to approach this practically from the perspective of a reverse engineer. Now, as a reverse engineer, we don't really have to care about this code at all. All we have to do is understand that it exists and learn to sort of pattern match with our eyes when we see it in the debugger so that we can bypass it and get to the main, which is the start of the actual code that was written for the binary. So let's go through the two components here very quickly. Then we'll open it up in a debugger and I'll explain some tricks for identifying where the main function is from this reference point. Now in IDA, you might have noticed that all of these are nicely labeled. This is because this boilerplate code is standard across all VC runtime or MSVC, you might have heard that term, MSVC binaries. So it's easy to create signatures for this, which IDA has done, and it labels these functions. Now in X64 debug, I can show you here quickly, run to our entry point. You can see that X64 debug has not labeled these functions. Now, of course, these functions are identical to these functions in IDA. The only difference is there is no labels here, so it's a little bit hard to identify what's going on. Now let's go back to IDA. We'll take a deeper dive into these two functions. Then we'll come back to X64 debug here, and I'll show you how it's not too difficult to identify main even if there's no symbols. So in IDA here, let's talk about the security in Knit Cookie. So the security init cookie is a buffer overflow protection cookie, which is added to binaries by default that are compiled in Visual Studio. In a nutshell, this is basically doing some protections to protect your binary from buffer overflows, and it's initialized in this function. It's the very first function that's called here. So if we jump into it, we can see it does a bunch of stuff that we're not gonna get into, but the important thing to note is that this function always looks the same. Across all binaries that have the security cookie net functionality, this code will look pretty much identical. So it's easy once you've seen enough binaries to pattern match this. You can see there are a couple constants here, the security cookie constants, which you might hear a reference in some upcoming tutorials that we're gonna do. So this is what we're talking about when we talk about the security cookie. That's the first function that's called, and you can happily step right over that if you're debugging a binary, and you could ignore it if you're analyzing a binary in IDA. 
The next function is actually a jump to a function. It's considered a thunk or a uh, section of code which does a small setup before it calls the main for your program. You can see here that the label that Ida has given it is uh, SCRT common main SEH, SEH standing for uh, structured exception handler. And that is what this is. This is setting up some additional exception handling. So if there's an error with your program, if your program throws an exception, this code will actually add some extra information into that exception handling chain, which can be useful for debugging. Again, this is considered boilerplate code or standard code, which is always added to MSVC compiled binaries in Visual Studio. This is stripped out in some binaries, but that's a special case, which we're not gonna cover here because in those binaries, it's actually even easier to find main. Usually main will be the entry point or it will be very close to the entry point. So what is this code? Well, it's code that we don't really care about except for the fact that buried in here is a call to our main. So if we scroll down here, here's our main. Now, of course, Ida has all of these symbols. We haven't stripped the symbols out of our binary. So it's easy to identify what's going on here. All of these functions are labeled. If we were to strip the symbols out, you can see that this is actually a little bit harder to identify what's going on. However, Ida does have signatures for most of these functions because they are, again, standard across most compiled binaries. So it's easy for Ida to identify them. The trick that I want to bring to your attention here is that even if you don't have any of these symbols, there's one thing that is going to be constant across all MSVC compiled binaries, which are console applications. If it's a console application, the function prototype for main is always the same. If I hover over main, you can see the function prototype right below. We have main, the first parameter is argc, the second parameter is a pointer to argv, and the third parameter is a pointer to the environment variables, envp. You can see here, Ida has helpfully labeled these three arguments in the assembly, but if these aren't labeled, you will always be able to see this pattern in the function. And this is the pattern that you're looking for if you are trying to identify main from the CRT structured exception handler thunk. This little section of code here is three moves setting up the three arguments for main and then calling main. So that's what you're gonna look for when you open a binary, you get to the entry point and you try and find main. Again, in most situations, if you're using Ida, this will already be labeled for you. And in fact, Ida will helpfully open main for you when you first analyze the binary. It won't actually open the entry point because Ida knows that the entry point is not main and you're probably not too interested in this boilerplate code. You're probably interested in the actual main code, right? So I will helpfully do that for you. However, this gets tricky when you're debugging an X64 debug because of course X64 debug doesn't have all of these nice signature identifications for the functions. So let's open up X64 debug here. We'll restart. Here's our hello world program. We're gonna run to the entry point. Of course, there's always a breakpoint on the entry point by default in X64 debug. Now, this is where a lot of people get tripped up, and this is the reason why we wanted to make this tutorial. When you run to the entry point in an MSVC binary, you are going to find a bunch of interesting code here that has nothing to do with the binary you're trying to analyze. It is, in fact, just the boilerplate code that we saw in IDA. You can see here the first call. This is going to be the security cookie initialization, and if we click on it, press Enter to open it up you can see some of the similar code that we just saw in Ida. You can see here's the constant for the stack cookie, which is constant across all MSVC binaries. And I should note, there's a difference between X64 and 32-bit binaries. The cookie is different and the code will look a little bit different. But of course, across all 64-bit binaries and across all 32-bit binaries, it's gonna look the same. So this function, we don't have to care about at all. Let's press minus to go back so we can skip over it. Let's press jump over. Now we have a little stack setup thing here, which I'll talk about in a minute. And now we get to our jump into the structured exception handler setup thunk. So let's jump into that. Now this again is 
going to look kind of complex without any symbols. There isn't a lot of information here. But what we can do is we can look for those three moves and a call and see if we can't identify where the main is. So here's all of our calls that are highlighted for us. Here's a call that has three moves, but these moves aren't moving things into registers. And of course, we know that in 64-bit, the arguments are passed on the registers. So we're looking for move RCX, move RDX, move R10, move R8, right? If you're unsure of what I'm talking about, then we have an upcoming tutorial on calling conventions, which might be interesting to you. So let's continue down and look for those move setups for the registers. Now we can see here all of these calls, there's no moves before them, but this call right here, we can see we have a move ECX, lower bytes of RCX, RDX, and R8. So these are the first three arguments to a function call. And what are we moving into it? Well, we can remember that the function prototype for main is the argc, argv, and environment variables. So here we go. This is our move, 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 and this must be our main. So let's enter to jump into it. And of course, we found our main here. Here's our two calls to hello world, and that's our main code. So in a nutshell, let's go back to Ida so we can see all the labeling. In an MSVC, so this is a C or C++ binary that's compiled with Visual Studio, you will have this boilerplate code sitting at the entry point to your binary. You can ignore it safely, and all you need to do is skip over the call to the init cookie, jump into the SEH setup, and then scroll down until you find the move, move, move to set up the three arguments for main, and that is your main function. So you could ignore all the code that comes before main if you're analyzing malware. If you're trying to do some sort of exploitation or something, this might be more interesting to you. But for analyzing malware, where you just want to get to the code that was actually developed by the developer, you want to get to main, and that's how you do it. So hopefully this answers some of your questions. I'm sure you have many more questions about what the heck the security cookie actually does and what the structured exception handlers actually do. So what I will do is I'll link below the video a bunch of links to the Microsoft documentation on this. These are very well documented because of course these are standard development practices for Microsoft. They're just simply used by malware authors and so we need to understand them when we're analyzing malware. Stay tuned for the next tutorial and we'll see you on Discord.